Don't forget, we have the tour coming to you. Link below. Linzu asks, can you do a video on investing in mobile homes? I'm not talking about mobile home parks, but individual units within the parks. Here's the thing, I hate mobile homes for four main reasons. A lot of money can be made from mobile homes, especially if you buy like a really cheap one and you pull out the unit and you just basically custom build a new one in a factory and have it plopped onto the spot and then resell it. There's a big business of flipping these mobile home units individually. But for the average investor, I generally don't recommend them and the four reasons why are first financing. The financing is terrible. You're not going to get the typical 30 year fixed rate conventional financing. Generally, you have to put more money down. We're talking 30 to 40% down. You're not doing 5, 10, 15, 20% down. You're usually not getting the 30 year fixed rate loan or those interest rates. Instead, oftentimes you're seeing things like 20 year loans with, with seven year fixed rate terms. You're seeing a lot more of a commercial style of financing. Instead of a 4% interest rate, you might see like a five and a half percent interest rate. There are big, variables in the financing that I just don't like. And it makes sense because the lenders are protecting themselves against the depreciating asset. Which brings up point number two, depreciation and appreciation or lack thereof. In California, there's something called a 443 or 433, something like this. Basically, when a manufactured home gets attached to a foundation and you own the land, you generally see appreciation. These aren't mobile homes anymore, but I'm talking about those mobile homes that are manufactured and mobile, that is they still got the wheels and you don't own the land. When you don't own the land, you lease the land, these mobile homes tend to drop in value much like vehicles do. I rarely see them appreciate. In fact, most people who end up buying mobile homes end up losing money on them and just see them as a way to try to keep their living expenses lower and aren't looking at them as an investment. That's because much like cars, they go down in value, they depreciate, and they don't ride the real estate wave as well as houses do, mostly because you don't actually own anything. You own a personal piece of property and you get DMV stickers. You don't get title to land or deed of real estate. It's not really real estate investing. The third problem is you generally don't have any control over what's called the space rent. That is, oh yeah, I'm plot number 50 and I park my mobile home on it. Well, space rent can oftentimes be a ridiculously expensive amount to essentially lease the land you're parked on from the park owner. Well, unfortunately, these rents go up. And very unlike a mortgage where when you lock in, let's say a mortgage on a house and it's $2,000 a month, your payment stays the same with the exception of like insurance and property taxes, your principal and interest, your loan payments stay the same. Space rent goes up with inflation or more. Space rent oftentimes goes up dramatically as well when properties change hands. So an owner might have, let's say a $700 space rent, somebody else comes in to buy it, it gets reassessed, and all of a sudden the space rent goes to like $1,200. It's absolutely obscene. The rules for land leases on these mobile home parks, they make no sense to me. They blow my mind, I can't stand them. I've actually stopped as a real estate broker working with mobile homes. In the past, I used to transact mobile homes, I ain't doing it anymore. It's mostly because I like to sell things that I believe in. I guess this is where I would usually say something like, like my real estate investing course, which you could get for 18% off if you use spring 2019. But really the last reason I hate mobile homes is generally there's a restriction against renting them out, which to me defeats the purpose of owning real estate. If you buy something and you can't rent it out, that, that defeats everything that I preach about real estate, that you should buy a home, don't over improve it, make the numbers make sense, buy it as a good deal, turn it into a rental. To me, that's how you build wealth in real estate. And because mobile homes don't appreciate and you can't rent them out and you don't have control over the land lease and the financing sucks, I don't like mobile homes. Jason asks, hey Kevin, I bought my first property and got a bathroom added, but my toilets gurgle and when I wash the dishes for a bit, the water gets in my shower. That dude that did the renovation doesn't wanna come back and fix it. How would you handle the situation? Well, Jason, this sounds pretty crappy. No pun intended, realistically, it's quite possible that these new added drains, the, the bathroom toilet and the bathroom shower that was added, if there's a shower, it looks like there is, didn't get properly vented to the exterior of the property. See, here's the thing. I'm not a plumber, so don't sue me, bro. And instead of thinking about suing me, if I'm wrong about anything, make sure to buy this shirt here. See, it says, don't sue me, bro. That's because I'm all for sharing my opinion, but qualifying that I'm a real estate broker, not a plumber or a financial advisor or an attorney or whatever else you think it is that I am. When you have something uh, like a drain that is supposed to, uh, you know, collect the water in your shower or whatever, the problem is 
oftentimes when they set up these drains, which are supposed to have what's called a P-trap in them, which kind of just looks something like this, and then you get this vent that goes up the wall, and then you get the drain that kind of goes down the wall. That might not be the most pretty representation of a P-trap, but it's supposed to look like a P-trap. And don't get me wrong, I don't mean P as in like P going down it and peeing in the shower. I mean P is in the shape of it. Uh, the, the point is, when, when you drain water down a plumbing system, if there is no vent, or the vent is too small and it's constricted, and basically the drains are struggling to get air, then you get gurgling and bubbling. Think about it this way. Have you ever gone to those five gallon jugs in like a grocery store or whatever, and or, or in an office, like a CPA or doctor's office, and you take your cup and you fill it up with water? You know how it goes like That's because it's trying to get air from the top? The same thing could be happening in your plumbing system if there's not enough air to let the water flow. So unfortunately, if this is somebody that was unlicensed, uninsured, there might be little you can do other than file a small claims lawsuit against the person. You just have to know where they live. Hopefully they're still local because obviously that's messed up. It should not be doing that and that kind of sucks. The benefit of using licensed people is you would have, and maybe you did use somebody licensed, in which case, look up their contractor's bond so you could file a claim against what's known as their surety bond for not properly doing their work or completing their work. And if that doesn't work, then there's always general liability insurance if there actually become defects or issues, which at this point, it sounds like there are. Good luck with real estate investing. Make sure you join me on tour because folks, I don't wanna sell you something on the tour. I wanna teach you. I I want to grab you, I want to feel you, and I want to say, hey, why aren't you investing in real estate? That's it. Can't wait to see you there. Remember, if you're a member of the course, you get $100 off to any of the tour events. If you want to bring a plus one, you can do so, and it ends up for course members being just $150 per ticket. Email me for details at kevin at meetkevin.com. Talk to you later.